How is everyone doing today? Good, good. Um, I heard that. I, that makes sense, coming from where you came from. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I, first off, I just want to say that I'm happy to make it through another week. Um, this was one of those weeks that you're just kind of like, you get to Monday and you wish it was Friday kind of deal. Except for it was actually on Tuesday. That's when my week actually started. Um, so I ended up having, because Kane was out of town, um, having to cover his classes in the afternoon. And then I had another trainer who always seems to go out of town whenever Kane goes out of town. So I ended up for the rest of the week having to work, uh, open to close at the gym and everything. So it just makes for long days and everything like that. And you get tired and everything like that. Um, so I'm happy that we are here on God's Sabbath day to, uh, partaking some rest and fellowship. And uh, I wasn't actually supposed to be speaking today, but I realized at the end of the week that no one else was scheduled to speak with Freddie. And I had a thought that came into my head earlier in the week. And I was like, hey, maybe I can wing something. And the only reason I'm telling you all this is so this message kind of lengthens out just a little bit. Um, to where I don't feel like I'm only up here for five minutes just in case. So uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get into this. And I want to look at this message as just kind of, of a reminder of uh, how we can think of ourselves sometimes, but even in that thought, how precious we can be to God our Father. Um, you know, for whatever reason, when we find ourselves down in the slumps or whatever, we can get hard on ourselves and we can call ourselves random things. And I've always said that I've had a wandering mind. It goes really weird, random places. And there's been times where you, whether you're physically looking into the mirror, you're just taking a good hard look at yourself and you're just like, I'm worthless. I'm nothing better than just a donkey. And you hear it like in Gordon Ramsay's voice and everything like that, just calling you a donkey. And it's a, it's a random weird thought, but God likes donkeys. Um, and really, in the grand scheme of things, we're very similar to donkeys. We can all agree that we're stubborn, right? We can all agree on that. Um, we can also say that donkeys are uh, all-encompassing because you have your smart donkeys, your dumb donkeys, and you even have your jack donkeys as well. Um, so donkeys include everyone. Um, but I want to take a couple look at some donkeys in the Bible and just see how we can be just a simple donkey, but something so much greater to God. Um, we're all familiar with the story of Balaam and his donkey in Numbers 22, but go ahead and turn over there. Numbers 22, and we'll pick up in verse 21. This is after God just told Balaam what to do, and Balaam decides to do the exact opposite of that. Um, and it says, So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the prince of, princes of Moab. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the, vineyard, the vineyards with a wall on the side and a wall on that side. Wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey and when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall, so he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn, either to the right hand or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam, so Balaam's anger was aroused, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord open the mouth of the donkey. And she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have 
abused me. I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, I am, not, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to, you, disposed to do this to you? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you, because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely I would have also killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, it displeases, if it displeases you, I will turn back. And then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only with the word that I speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Um, we see this, and we see just this plain donkey. And what God can do with just a donkey to work his will and to work his might. Um, it took someone, this would fall in the category, this Balaam's donkey would be a dumb donkey, not able to talk or anything like that. And then all of a sudden, it's able to speak. Not only can this donkey speak, but it also has the vision to see the angel of the Lord. And we can look at this donkey and think to ourselves, I've never done anything that awesome myself. When God wants me to speak, I have not the courage to speak. I don't have the vision to see what God wants from me. So we look at this and we see this donkey and we think, wow, when you really look into it, this donkey is something amazing to see, to read about. And I could never stack up to that. But even this donkey, I do not believe, is the most amazing donkey in the Bible. I believe the word donkey is used 86 times in the Bible. I could be a little off on that, so um, don't hold me to that. But there is one donkey that I want to look at in Mark 11. Mark 11, and we'll start in verse 2. Jesus has just told two of his disciples, or he's talking to two of his disciples, and he said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and as soon as you have entered into it, you will find a colt tied, onto, tied and on which no one has sat. Loose it and bring it. And if anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Say, The Lord has need of it, and immediately he will send it here. And just real quick, colt, I want to... It could be a young horse or donkey, and this, it is a donkey, just so that way we understand that I'm sticking to my narrative here. Um, but in verse 4 it says, So they went their way and found the colt tied to the door outside on the street, and they loosed it. But some of those who stood there said to them, What are you doing loosing the colt? And they spoke to them just as Jesus had commanded, so they let them go. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their clothes on the road, and others cut down leafy branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then those who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. This donkey, this colt, a young donkey that had never been sat on before probably wasn't used to carry things because no one expected anything from it. Did the greatest thing that any of us could ever do to put on our shoulders Jesus Christ and lift him high and walk through so everyone could sing his praises. This donkey is the greatest example of a donkey, I think, in the Bible and something we could all strive to be to live our lives day to day 
in a way that as we walk through the streets, through the crowds, through the cities, that everyone can sing the praises of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And no matter what we think of ourselves, where we see ourselves, God sees something much greater. Even if we see ourselves as just a simple donkey, God sees us as something that is worthy to carry his son's name for others to sing his praises.